The story you're going to see now on our checkup report is nothing short of remarkable. A story about children blind from birth who now can see. Well, their condition, doctors say, is extremely rare. In fact, they know of only one other such case in medical literature. But two children in a family in Tremont were each born with this rare combination of eye disorders. Our science specialist, Ed Yates, is here now to tell us about this thing called Peter's Anomaly. Ed. Bruce, the uh, disease is rare enough in one child, but it's almost unheard of in two children within the same family. But it happened to the Corbett family in Tremont, and doctors originally told the parents their first child, Colton, would be blind. Do you want to play? Yeah. All right. Okay, there you go. Something that normally happens to the fetus within six weeks of development did not happen to Colton Corbett here when he was being carried by his mother. Usually like clockwork, the cornea on the eye clears, the lens drops back, and the iris separates from the cornea. The angle of the eye opens up. All of this occurs at the end of six weeks of development in the womb. But in Peter's anomaly, all of these elements in part remain attached by pieces of membrane or vessels. Blindness is the result. Colton's condition was further complicated with glaucoma and cataracts. It was about three days afterwards when our pediatrician called us and said that he would be totally blind and that there wasn't much hope of ever having him see at all. Three-year-old Colton's disorder was the product of a rare translocated gene. Even then, it should have only happened once. When we first evaluated Colton, we did genetic studies because of the rare combination and ha found a translocation of one of his genes, which we assumed was the cause in the situation. And therefore, when Mrs. Corbett became pregnant with it, Natasha, we were truly not concerned that this very rare th thing would happen twice, when in fact it was. We have done literature searches, and we can only find one other case in the literature which adds up to this uh, group of findings, and it's in a Finnish uh, family where they only had one child. While first opinions claim Colton would be blind for the rest of his life, doctors at the University of Utah Health Sciences Center did not share the view. While it's doubtful the one eye can be saved, numerous surgeries to separate the membranes on the other eye have restored vision. Doctors even had to make Colton a new pupil. I took an instrument which is called an oculotome, which is basically a guillotine, a very tiny guillotine cutter. And after I had removed the cataract, then I basically made him a pupil. He's been in the hospital 23, but actual major surgeries, he's only had about nine or 10 of them. They have to go in and make sure that the pressure is down, that the glaucoma has receded, and so they have to put him completely out because he's so little they can't do it in the office. He is getting to the point now where he won't have to go through as many anymore, so they can do the procedures in the office. An early photograph of the Corbett family. Four-year-old Angie is normal with no abnormal vision. Her brother, Colton, the second born, was born with the anomaly, plus another condition his parents will have to deal with later on, dwarfism. The third born, Natasha, also has Peter's anomaly plus the dwarfism, but university doctors who treated her blindness within weeks after the birth are extremely optimistic. She may even be able to drive a car someday. I don't think Colton will ever be able to drive, although we, we can be very surprised. And Mrs. Corbin has worked extensively with him in eye exercises and in uh, patching and making sure he works hard, uh, but I'm very encouraged that Natasha should certainly be able to by then. Most of Colton and Natasha's success story is due to their mother's tenacity, a premise, no matter how unconvincing on the surface, that somewhere, somehow, a second or third opinion would provide some answers that might reverse the tragic effects of a mutation. When we lost the one eye, we were told that that should have happened to both eyes, that we shouldn't have, even through surgeries, that we, they were amazed that they could even get the one. And so we were especially grateful that we had one good eye. And I never give up hope that someday we might be able to do something with the other eye. But now it's the point where our kids are not blind anymore, that we know they're not blind. Medical costs here for the Corbett's uh, is frustrating. Surgery on each eye costs about $10,000. The Corbett's will also pay about $50 per month from this point on for eye medication to take care of the glaucoma. Eventually, how acute do they expect the little girl's vision will be? If she can drive a car, perfect vision? Well, 2050, Bruce, is what they're projecting. And keep in mind, this is only a projection. 
for the boy, it's not quite as good because they didn't get to him early enough. 2080, perhaps, on the boy, the one good eye that he has. Of course, the other eye, they don't believe they can ever save that one. Is there a genetic component to this disease? Two out of three children in the family have it. Would a, another child be like Okay, the, the first girl is completely normal. Second and third child, abnormal with the very same condition, which is extremely rare to have two together. If Mrs. Corbett should have more children, which she doesn't expect to do, a one in four chance of having a duplicate of, uh, of the last two hmm. the, uh, with a, with a dis, uh, deformity. The, the surgery of creating a pupil uh, for the eye, was that really pioneering surgery that the doctors invented as they performed the procedure? Well, it's, it's, it's not the first time it's been performed, Bruce, but is it, it is extremely unique. I mean, it's, it's not done often, and, uh, and most of the time it is not successful. You're talking about very intricate, microscopic surgery that requires quite a bit of expertise to pull it off. Uh, as, as Mrs. Corbett said there, it was not expected the children would ever see again. And that was the opinion of t at least two other yeah. doctors. So it always pays to get a third opinion. A remarkable <laughs> third opinion. Thanks right. for sharing that story. Kindly now take note of what these uh, advertisers have to say, and I'll be back with more primetime access in a moment. <laughs>